So YouTube, welcome back to my channel and in today's video I'll be showing you guys how to mix and master right here on FL Studio and you can use the same technique to mix and master any song of any genre using what I'll just be teaching you today. So I'll be using FL Studio default or stock plugins throughout the video. You don't need any fancy or any expensive plugin um, because all of those do the same thing or the same basic function that um, FL Studio stock plugins do. So I'll be showing you um, using the FL Studio default plugins. Um, if you are new to the channel, feel free to subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment, let me know what you guys think about the video. Otherwise, without wasting much of your time, let's get into it. So the whole concept of mixing and mastering revolves around you wanting to make your song loud enough uh, or audible enough for distribution, whether it's distribution to digital music stores or for radio. It has to meet a certain standard of loudness and which is what I'll be showing you today. But then visually, this is how I would explain it. First, when you're producing um, in your production session, you are producing working with low volumes, which is advisable. I always advise you guys to work with low volumes as you're producing and then your overall um, master bus will have a, a peak value of negative six decibels. Don't make your sounds peak above that. It should be at least between negative six and negative three. It's not loud enough at this point. But then now mixing and mastering is making it loud enough and it has to go from negative six decibels to zero decibels. But you can't do that in one go because this is what will happen. What will happen is the sounds that were too low on your original mix or on your pre pre mastered song, the sounds that were low there will sound loud enough, which is fine. However, the sounds that were too loud will clip they will be too too loud and they will um, be clipped off by a limiter if you have a limiter so you want to avoid this at all costs so how do you make your song your overall song loud enough and still avoid clipping in it you'll have to go about it this way um, this is how you'd go about it just gonna load these two images so this is your original song the pre-mastered song it has peaks as you can see what you want to do first is um, draw a line um, somewhere around here and bring these peaks down so the professional word we use on FL studio is compression you compress the sounds down so the peak or the loud sounds you bring them down to where the low sounds are and then your mix will look like this so as you can see the sounds that were too loud those which were peaking are brought down by compression so they were squashed down now everything is playing at the same level and then the final thing is to just apply an overall gain to this and then it's gonna look like this which is what we're gonna be doing today so practically, this is how you'd go about it. You have to loop your song where most of the sounds are playing together. And then from here, this is where I have my drum kit, my melody, my bass line, my pads. Everything is literally playing on this loop. Let me just press play. Let me press play again. Now you wanna watch out your master bus and observe it. So already the volumes are peaking to positive three decibels, which is what we don't want. The first thing to do now will then be to mix your song down. So you're gonna select all of these sounds, hold control plus shift and select the, uh, the tracks on the mixer and then drag one fader down so now we are mixing our song down to around negative six between negative six and negative three decibels okay we still have to mix it down again so what we are doing is preparing our song for mastering
Okay, so I think we can work with that. Our song is peaking between negative six and negative three decibels. So now what we're gonna do is add a limiter. That's the first thing we're gonna do, add a limiter. What the limiter does is it protects our songs. Um, any signal that is coming in that will peak to beyond zero decibels will be um, chopped off, it will be trimmed off. Um, if I'm gonna explain it that way, I'm not sure if I'm explaining it right, but then, um, your song won't peak beyond zero decibels. Um, so it protects your song from cases where even if your song at the moment is playing, um, below negative six decibels, it is still crucial to add a limiter. It protects your song from cases where maybe you duplicated your, your baseline and your, and your leads. So basically, in this case, you have two copies of the baseline and the lead. And then at this point, your song will play too loud. It might just jump or peak off beyond zero decibels. So the limiter takes care of that. Um, now, secondly, what you're gonna do, but you won't notice the difference or the impact or effect of adding that limiter. For now, we just have to add it and also add a parametric EQ apply a 20 hertz to 18 kilohertz so this it um, sort of chops off the sounds that we can't hear so there's no need to have them on um, so these are the two plugins that you have to make sure to start off with apply an eq first at the first um, slot and at the last slot you want to apply the fruity limiter the order is very important you have to do it this way now what we're gonna do is follow the logic that I was explaining to you through those graphic images. The first thing to do, because your song is peaking, um, you have to bring the sounds that are peaking or the sounds that are too high or too loud to the same level as those that are low. So what we're gonna do is add a maximus. I'm gonna use it as a compressor, but there are many compressors you can use, but I prefer Maximus cause it's visual. I can see what's happening to my sounds. So the first thing we're gonna do is go to the low sounds. I'm just gonna maximize that. As you can see, this is where your low sounds are peaking. So I'm gonna apply a compression. This is where I'm gonna apply it. As you can see, when I um, right click and add a knob, it draws a red line. This is where I wanna tell FL Studio to compress my sound. So any signal beyond that red line will be, squ uh, will be squashed or compressed. But then we don't wanna apply a lot of compression for our low sounds. And that's the compression. Right? And then for your low sounds, you want to make sure that um, they are playing um, on mono, as in they are meshed. Everything is playing on mono. And then your mids, you can separate them to make them sound um nicer but then with your low frequencies your your bass lines you don't want to hear uh, more of the bass line on your left ear and the other bass line on your right ear we just want them um playing in mono but then for your mid-range frequencies and high frequencies you can separate them um just, you can play around with the knobs it's fine but then just be careful when it comes to mixing um mastering uh, especially um, don't just play around and not know what you're doing because instead of the Maximus making your mix sound good, it can just make it sound terrible. So you have to know what you're doing. Now we're going to go to our mid-range um, frequencies and apply compression again. Okay, that is too compressed. What I'm going to do is apply a pre-gain to bring the sound up a bit. So this is just me magnifying it so that I can see the wave file clearly.
let me just delete this and delete that as well And then I can lower down the gain since I didn't really want to give it a gain, but I just wanted to magnify it. So I think it's compressed enough. Let's play our high um, frequencies. As you can see, there are sounds that are peaking here. So we want to um, bring them down. So the next thing you want to do now, since your song sounds leveled enough, now you want to just apply gain to your overall song. So you have to go to the master and apply gain to it. But then there are two gain knobs here and you don't have to confuse them because they do different things. This is the pre-gain knob and this is the post-gain knob. The pre-gain knob gives gain to the signal that is coming into the maximus. But then um, the post gain knob, it gives gain to the output signal that is coming out that is, um, that has went through the Maximus plugin itself. So this is what you're going to be using the post gain knob because this is before the, um, effects that we've applied on this, um, bands, the low band, the mid, uh, mid range band and the high band, but we want to give, um, gain to the, um to the post maximus signal if i may put it that way so let's just give it a bit of gain and then one thing to note is also we are giving it gain in mind we want to achieve the zero decibel um level So our sound is um, very close to zero, zero decibels le um, level, but then I prefer to use the fruity limiter to give gain to my song. You guys can use whatever plugin you want to use. Um, there are different plugins that um, give or amplify your sound. So let's try use the limiter. And just make sure that when you're using the limiter, your sounds are not clipping. So as you can see, our song is just at zero decibels. Um, now the last thing to do is load an EQ just to play around with um, how you want your song to sound. Uh, maybe there's too many low frequencies that you want to reduce. You can do that using this parametric EQ or there's too high frequencies or there are too many mid-range frequencies or you want to give it a boost on either um, frequency you can use the maximus. It depends on what your song needs. You don't have to do exactly what I'm doing to your song because your song is produced differently and you would want something different for your song so you have to apply it accordingly But then you just have to be careful when you're using the parametric EQ on your master bus because it applies everything to every sound that is coming into the master. Any plugin or any preset you use on this master might ruin your whole mix. If you apply a reverb here, you're literally applying reverb to every sound, the bass sounds, your kicks, and you wouldn't want to apply reverb to the master. So these are the things you do on your mixing stage of which I couldn't 
um, show you guys um, on this video I'm sorry for that because I wanted to to show you mixing as well but then um, most of the sound designing please do it before the mastering stage and one thing you should note is also mastering a song does not make it sound good if your mix if your mix is bad your mastering won't um, make changes to that um, and also if your um, production process if your flow of the song and the rhythm of it is bad mixing and mastering it doesn't sound um, doesn't make it sound good so just note that um, one thing i can do is if i want my bass sound to um, sound audible now i can just go to the bass master add an eq and then just experiment until i get the sound that i desire and also it's advisable to have three to five different mix versions or mastered versions of the same song and then after exporting the three to five songs you can decide on which one sounds okay for you otherwise that's it for today's video i hope you learned a lot from it if you did please leave a like leave a comment let me know guys i will still be I will still be doing further videos on mixing and mastering because I do want to dive deep into it but you can still master your songs professionally using the techniques I showed you. Cheers guys, I'll catch you.